Well, winter is on its way. The cold days have started and we're feeling the push. We, after some analysis, decided that we're gonna overwinter in our small cabin one more winter before we start on our house. In anticipation of that, we knew that the wood stove we had in here probably wasn't the most ideal and neither was the chimney setup. So back in the spring, we started the hunt for a better wood stove. So I wanna take you through the wood stove upgrade, our hearth upgrade, and the chimney upgrade. The first thing we found was this old Fisher wood stove. Came up on a yard sale and we got it for I think $100 or $125, which was a great purchase. The only thing was, it was a rust bucket. It had been sitting in somebody's front yard for years and whoever we bought it from found it and kind of put it in the garage to at least protect it. So we spent a few hours with a wire brush bringing this thing back to life and now it looks fantastic. This stove's probably a little bit big for our needs today, but we wanted to be on the safe side in case we do get a really deep cold spell. A lot of people think this winter is gonna be really harsh. Uh, that was one of the challenges we had last winter was the firebox on our other stove just wasn't very big. And so we really couldn't get enough wood in there to burn all night, which means we had to get up in the night and it kind of messed up our sleep schedule. Factor in that our cabin is, isn't exactly airtight, Okay, it's not airtight at all, which means we are losing quite a bit of the heat that we produce. But we're okay with that. We actually want the ventilation. We're not after an airtight home. That was never the strategy with this cabin. So having a little extra heat, that works well for us. Keep in mind too that we didn't have the best wood last winter either. We showed up here late and we found some mill ends that had been wet. We tried to dry them out, but you know, it didn't really work out that great. This year, we've got better wood and a better stove. We put the feelers out there because we knew we were gonna need a new chimney too. Our new stove has an eight inch chimney and the one we had before only had a six inch chimney. But we also were looking for an upgrade because we tried to dodge a bullet and we used single wall. We don't recommend that. We got through the winter with it, but we wanted to move to a triple wall pipe. Turns out my sister knew somebody who was demolishing a barn and bam, found some really good triple wall pipe. So we're gonna use this for our new chimney. But we ran into a few problems. I'll tell you a little story about those. Because of all the variables in installing our old wood stove, we decided to do a through the wall installation. This meant putting a, a 90 degree angle in the chimney pipe, which is not ideal. Uh, so we ended up having to go through the eave and come up through the roofing on the outside. Because of that, it didn't really matter if where the chimney penetrated the roof leaked or not because it's on the outside in the eave. So not a big deal. But this one, we're gonna go right through the roofing. And that's a bit of a problem because this chimney is a 12 inch diameter and the roofing is corrugated roofing. So finding a flashing that would fit that wasn't exactly easy. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, so we had to buy this thing, which is a rubberized uh, flexible flashing. And let's just say the picture didn't exactly do it justice. This thing is ginormous. Uh, it was called a maxi flashing, and I see why. As if the corrugated roofing and the 12 inch pipe didn't make this complicated enough, add in that the roof pitch is 12 and 12, which means it's a 45 degree angle. That makes finding one of these things really difficult. We also thought this would be a great opportunity to upgrade our hearth. So we added a couple of rows to the brick hearth that we already had, and then we added a tier of cinder blocks in the back. This should give us a little more thermal mass and help us retain more of the heat. There's been a lot of debate about what this thing is that's on my head. Some people think it's a baby carrier, maybe a garter belt. Nobody really knows, but I'm gonna tell you what the secret is. Before I found out that we were going to be using maybe the world's largest flashing to protect the chimney and water from getting in, I thought I was gonna have to cut the perfect access hole. And I thought, I can't do that, I don't even know how. So I turned to Google, and I Googled how to cut an angle on a cylinder. And that's what this thing is. Turns out there's a mathematical equation. I don't know who made it, but it actually works pretty doggone good. So I took a huge piece of cardboard and I did the math and I came up with this guy. So what we're gonna do is trace this guy on the roofing. That'll give us our perfect cut.
right, chimney's all done. Everything went well. It took us a little while to sort out the chimney cap and to kind of figure out the metal flashing on the inside of the chimney, or excuse me, on the inside of the cabin. But we used some metal that we got uh, last fall, part of the reclaimed material thing. And I was thinking when I got that metal, I have no idea how I'm gonna use this. And we finally found a use for it. So uh, everything went really good there. We had our first fire this morning just to test everything out. In fact, the stove's just a little bit warm and it's been about six hours. So one advantage to this stove, it's a little bit thicker. Uh, we did add a flu thermometer so that we can monitor the temperature of our burn. And one other thing we did, and I don't know why, just because these systems we're building are kind of unconventional. In fact, if you have building codes in your area, you're not going to be able to do this, just so you know. Uh, you'll have to use EPA stamped, government approved, won't kill you. Uh, chimney pipe and all that stuff. Uh, but because this system's a little unconventional, um, I actually used this laser thermometer uh, to check the temperature of the flue where it penetrates the roof, just so I can kind of keep an eye on that. I didn't turn the stove up really high, so I'm not sure what it is uh, at the worst case scenario. But at a pretty steady burn today, we had about 80 degrees right where it penetrates the roof, and I'm really cool with that temperature. So we'll keep an eye on it as we get toward winter and we start burning a little bit hotter in the stove. Otherwise, everything went really good. Thanks for joining us for this video. We're excited to be a little warmer this winter. If you'd like to learn more about our off-grid homesteading project, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Find the subscribe button. And also follow us on our blog and our Facebook and Instagram. We do a lot more uh, updates over there than we do on YouTube because not everything's worth making a video out of. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.